Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. In this video, we'll discuss the Harvest Right Freeze Dryer. This is a machine that allows you to freeze dry food that can last for over 25 years. I purchased mine a couple of months ago, and I'll be honest, I'm totally amazed at what I can do with this machine. In this video, I'll cover the main points covering what makes these machines so unique, how to use them, how to maintain it, how they stack up against other food preservation methods like canning and dehydrating, and we'll discuss pricing. So stick around. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing by clicking on the bell icon below to get updates for videos that are very similar to this. In addition, at any time during the video, if you're interested in checking out one of these machines, I'll post a link in the description section below along with a coupon code that will save you some money at checkout and will also help provide support to the channel. Enjoy the video. In this video, we'll discuss the following items. What makes this process so unique? We'll walk through the process of what it looks like to actually freeze dry some food. We'll discuss how a freeze dryer works. We'll discuss the advantages of freeze dried food post SHTF. We'll discuss how to actually go about maintaining your freeze dryer. We'll also cover what type of food can you actually freeze dry. We'll discuss freeze dryers versus other methods. We'll also look at practical uses for this machine. We'll cover the cost versus the ROI or return on investment. And finally, we'll quickly discuss rehydrating the food. So to begin with, what makes a freeze dryer so unique? Freeze drying is a technology that allows you to extract water from food, enabling it to be stored for over 25 years. Not only can you use this method to preserve your food for a long time, the food itself maintains 97% of its nutritional value while also maintaining its original taste and much of its texture when rehydrated. There's really no other technology on the market at this time that does anything close to this. Now, what makes this specific freeze dryer so unique is that up until a few years ago, your only alternative to get freeze dried food was to pay high prices from other companies that make this food. Often these prepackaged processed mills typically included unhealthy additives such as sodium nitrate, high fructose corn syrup, trans fat, monosodium glutamate or MSG, food dyes and colors. Now you have the capability to store healthy food that you can make yourself and actually have complete control over what is being put in your long-term storage food. In addition, this technology was limited to companies that had the capability to pull this off or could afford the high cost to own and operate these machines. Now that this product has hit the market, that cost has been severely reduced. The overall process looks like this. First, you add food to the machine and over the course of nine hours, the machine drops the temperatures to minus 40 or actually colder. As a result, the water in the food is frozen. After the freezing phase, the chamber holding the food is pumped creating a vacuum. The frozen food is then slightly warmed by heating elements under the food trays, causing the water to evaporate out of the food, skipping the liquid phase of water through a process called sublimation, which I'll detail momentarily. Now, this process is unique compared to other methods like dehydrating your food. Again, we'll talk about this more in a moment, because the food is not altered or damaged in any way. Through the process, the food maintains its original shape and texture. The machine itself automates this process and all you have to do after adding the food is simply press start and the process runs a completion. It doesn't matter what you put in the freeze dryer. As long as the food is properly prepped in advance, you can add different types of food into the machine at the same time. So here's the actual process I go through when freeze drying food. I begin by preparing the food. I typically try to cut the food in slices under one inch thick, typically no taller than the freeze dryer pan itself. Normally fruits take a little longer to freeze dry and meats typically go a bit faster. Again, you could freeze dry a combination of different types of food together at the same time. If you need to freeze dry a batch a little longer so the water is completely removed from some of the food, that's okay. It won't negatively impact the other food. Next, I simply load the food into the machine, put the cover on, then start the machine. A typical batch will take about 24 hours, sometimes a little longer depending on what type of food you put into the machine. Once I finish the cycle, I simply remove the food and store it immediately. There are several ways you can store your food. For foods that I'll probably eat within a year's time, like bananas or apples, I normally just vacuum seal them in a mason jar. Now, for long-term storage, I'll add the food into a mylar bag and toss in an O2 absorber and then seal the bag. If properly stored in a dark, cool place, you can expect these to store for 25 years or more. So, how does a freeze dryer work? Let's talk about the technical process of what actually happens when you freeze dry something. 
I found a great article online that explains the process in a bit more detail. I'll post a link in the description section if you'd like to read the article for a more in-depth explanation. As I mentioned earlier, the process to remove all the water out of the food is called sublimation. There's two variables that dictate this process, temperature and atmospheric pressure. When you boil water on your stove top, energy is applied to the water, enabling the liquid water to convert to the gas phase. At sea level, you have one atmosphere of pressure and water will boil at 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if you were to boil water at a higher elevation, let's say in the mountains at around 6,000 feet, water will boil at a lower temperature, around 80 degrees Celsius, because at higher elevations, the atmospheric pressure is lower. Again, these two variables, temperature and atmospheric pressure, come into play, and by changing one of the two variables, the other variable will also be impacted. For water, by lowering the atmospheric pressure, you can lower the temperature at which it boils. So back to the discussion of sublimation. Inside the freeze dryer, you have a vacuum pump which drops the pressure inside the vacuum chamber down to a very low pressure or atmosphere. As a result, water that is frozen that is heated up to right above freezing or around 32 Fahrenheit or 0 Celsius, it can now be converted to a gas whereas it would normally convert to a liquid at this temperature. This narrow window that happens at this very specific temperature and atmospheric pressure is seen here in this chart. So hopefully you have an idea of how this machine specifically works. So this specific YouTube channel is about emergency preparedness, aka prepping. The advantages of freeze drying food after an emergency impact scenario are numerous, but here's a few in particular. Food is now infinitely easier to prepare. There's not much fuel required. You only need enough fuel to heat up water to boiling to rehydrate the food and that's it. If you have to cook food that wasn't already freeze dried, the amount of energy would be substantially more which could drain your fuel supplies. By not having to cut more wood to cook, you also save yourself time and calories to do other important tasks. Also, there's no cooking or cleanup involved. In a situation that is already stressful enough, not having to deal with preparing food and washing dishes used in preparing that food will be a huge benefit. Also, another important factor is that there will be no cooking smells from long cook times to learning hungry people in the surrounding area that you have food when it becomes scarce. Simply put the boiling water into the Mylar bag Close it to allow it to rehydrate your food, and you can serve it. When it comes to OPSEC, this is critical. So let's discuss maintaining this machine, specifically the vacuum pump. After each batch is done, you drain the oil from the machine and then filter it. After about 20 cycles, you have to take apart your vacuum pump and service it, something I'm going to do this week and we'll probably make a separate video to explain that process. So what types of food can you add to the machine? Often I get asked, well, what can you put in? The short answer is really anything you want. About the only thing you're not going to be able to freeze dry is a stick of butter, but otherwise, if you can think of it, you can freeze dry it. You can freeze dry just about anything including fully cooked meals, not just you know separate ingredients like apples or carrots or anything like that. The beauty of this machine is that the food comes out looking nearly identical and tastes amazing once you rehydrate it. So let's discuss comparing dehydration to freeze drying uh, to canning. Now this is a topic that really deserves its own video, but let me run you through the highlights. The first is longevity of the food. With freeze drying, your food will last for 25 years or longer. With dehydration, you can expect around 4 years. Canned foods, about 3 years. And with frozen foods, about 2 years. Next is nutrition. Freeze drying is remarkable because it causes no damage to the nutrition of the food being preserved. After food has been freeze dried, it typically retains around 97% of its nutritional value. Other methods of preservation, such as canning and dehydration, use higher temperatures that destroy much of the food value. Dehydration retains around 60% of its nutritional value, while as canning only retains about 40%. One of the other things that you have to consider is prep time. With freeze drying, you can cut up some of your food and put it on the trays and put it into the machine. Typically, this takes me around 20 minutes depending on what I'm putting into the machine. With dehydration, the process is more or less about the same. Now, I've never personally done canning before. I've watched a few videos online of putting food into a can and pressure cooking it, but I would say the prep time would probably take a little more. I'm guessing probably around two to three times over dehydration or freeze drying. But if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments section below, as again, I don't really have experience with this. So let's talk about the actual time that it takes for these different methods to work. For a freeze dryer, you normally are looking at roughly around 24 hours, sometimes as much as 40 hours, depending on what type of food. With dehydration, around 7 to 12 hours, again, depending on what you're dehydrating. 
Regarding canning, again, I have no experience with this, so if somebody wants to post a comment in the comment section below, I'd love to learn more uh, about that from you. So what's the difference in cost of these methods? Well, dehydration will set you back anywhere from $60 to several hundred dollars, depending on what kind of machine you purchase. It's in the same relative ballpark. But with freeze drying, yeah, there's a significant price jump, which I'll discuss in a minute. So if you're looking at the various options from a longevity and nutritional aspect, freeze drying wins hands down. Of course, the cost is significantly higher with a freeze drying machine, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So what are some of the practical uses for this machine? There's a lot of gear I own as a prepper. Some of it I may never use unless there's an emergency. Now, this is one of the things that I really like about having a freeze dryer. It's a device which you can use all the time and it has a lot of practical daily uses apart from emergency preparedness. When you freeze dry food at home, your food is untainted. It will accommodate any dietary need, including food allergies, vegetarian or vegan needs. And it's perfect for a non-preservative or non-GMO diet that is specifically designed for a healthy lifestyle. It has so many other practical applications apart from prepping such as gardening, healthy living, snacks. If you're into hunting or backpacking, you can create amazing snacks for the trail or mills at the campsite. Also, if you're into hunting or fishing, you can easily freeze dry what you bring home. It's also useful for homesteading, allowing you to freeze dry you know, your eggs, milk, or items that come out of your garden or orchard. So now let's discuss cost. I purposely put this one last as without the understanding of all the advantages of the machine, the price really won't make any sense. Before I purchased one of these, I had to ask myself, could I really justify the cost? These machines can set you back as much as $2,000 for the smallest option and as much as $3,000 for their largest machine. Now here's a few things that helped me personally make a decision. The first item is return on investment or ROI. The U.S. Department of Agriculture estimated that a typical family of four in the United States throws away 20 pounds of food each month, which amounts to $2,275 a year. I'll provide a link to a document you can download which details this in a bit more if you want to study it for yourself. My wife typically cooks with only fresh food which goes bad in a matter of days. I'm able to toss any items that are about to reach their expiration into the machine if we don't use them along with other foods preventing waste. The next item for me was the decision that I wanted to freeze dry food as part of my preps for the reason I mentioned earlier. But the problem I encountered is that a lot of the options on the market for freeze dry food were expensive, especially when you factor in needing enough food for a family of five if there were a true grid down scenario. I just didn't want to spend that amount of money. If you were to buy even a few months supply of commercial freeze dry food, it would easily add up to more than one of these machines. I found a great website which breaks down the costs associated with freeze drying food and the savings you'll get. Again, I'll post that link in the description section below if you want to check that out. So regarding rehydrating freeze dried food with water, I'll do some breakout videos shortly discussing this in more detail. In a nutshell, all you have to do is simply heat up water and pour it into a container with the food that has been freeze dried and that's really it. Different food requires different amount of water and time which is something I'll cover in a future video. So there you have it. Hopefully this video gives you enough information to help you make an informed decision whether this machine is something that you wanna pick up. Again, this is a product that we've really, really enjoyed over the last few months. I haven't done everything that you can really do with it. There's a lot of ingredients, a lot of recipes that I found online that I'm really excited to cook and to put in here and to actually store away. Uh, there's still a lot of ideas that we have on things that we wanna do with the machine. And I'll make videos throughout the year sharing some of the tips, some of the things I've learned. And again, hopefully educating you as to whether this is something you wanna to add to your own personal inventory. Again, if you wanna check out the product, I'll post a link in the description section below along with a coupon code. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you do have any questions or any feedback, please post those in the comments section below and I'll try to provide a response as quickly as possible. As always, be safe out there.